today on Power of Faith. Faith came with one word. One word from the word, come. Four-letter word, come. There was enough faith in that one word from the word Jesus to walk on the water. Well, glory to God. Welcome once again to Power of Faith. I'm Pastor Philip Derby with your family of Faith Victory Church right here in the capital city of Frankfort, Kentucky. And yes, delighted once again to be able to share with you in the truths of God's word once again. Luke 137 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. And we got this much time together. So let's make the most of it. This month I've been talking about fear versus faith. You say, well, Pastor, you, you, you talk about faith a lot. Well, the just shall live by it. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's enough for me right there. I want to please God and I want to live. So <laughs> I've learned some things. But, you know, we've been looking at, excuse me, we've been looking at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, where it says, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And then we looked at what God has given us in 2 Corinthians 4.13. It says, we having a spirit of faith, we believe, therefore we speak. So there is a war. The Bible says in, in, in uh, well, let's look at it over here in, in 1 Timothy chapter 6. It says in verse 12, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. So right there it says that we are in a fight but it's a good fight. In 1 John 5, 4, let me throw that in there. Whose servers born of God, I'm just believing you are that's listening to me. If you're not, just, just lift your hand up to heaven and say, Lord Jesus, save me, teach me, and I'll follow you all the days of my life. Forgive me. Just say it like that. How in your own words and, 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 watch, and watch what happens in your life. And then start getting in this book. Start learning things, see? But it says, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So that tells me in the world, it's full of fear. It's full of fear. And faith is the only thing that overcomes it. And it says here, fight the good fight of faith. So what is faith fighting? Spirit of fear. Spirit of unbelief. See? Spirit of death. Spirit of compromise. See? But faith will always have a battle with fear. Always. Always. You are not going to uh, live this faith life and not confront fear. You're going to confront fear whether you live in this faith life or not. Fear is automatic. You, if you're alive on this planet, you are, you are in a planet that's full of fear. All you have to do is just turn the news on. You kidding me? Well, don't, you might not want to turn it on right now. But it's full of fear. Oh, you know, you got this outbreak over here, you know, and you got, you know, I was in the airport the other day, people got masks on, wherever they go, they got they wearing these masks. 
I feel like I'm in a, a in a Hollywood movie somewhere, you know. Everyone's got these masks on. Well, you know, why they have a mask on? They're afraid they're going to breathe in something that's going to harm them. Now, I understand, you know, you're in a hospital and you're a doctor and you got that thing on or you're working, you know, around drywall or something. You got that on to protect your lungs. I get that. That's not fear. That's just good sense. But there's a lot of phobias out there that people are just taking the long way home because they're afraid, see? And fear, fear opposes. It raises its ugly head when somebody starts operating in faith. Peter, when he got out of the boat, he got out of the boat in faith. Remember that story? Let's look at that. That's in Matthew, I believe it's chapter 14. Matthew 14. Peter gets that word from Jesus to come out of that boat. And... Uh, it says here in verse oh, 25, And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, fear, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. Fear was driving them. Fear was dominating what they were saying, dominating their actions. Right there, Jesus is right there. The word is right there. But straightway, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Look at this. Be not afraid. He had to get to them to be effective and have any place in their life, he had to deal with the fear issue. Be of good cheer. Attitude. It's me. Be not afraid. And, he, and Peter answered him, verse 28, and said, Lord, if it bid you, bid me come unto thee, uh, come unto thee on, on the water. And he, Jesus, said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he actually walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was what? He was afraid. Fear. Faith got him started. Fear tried to interrupt his faith walk. I mean, you know he's walking by faith. Can't walk on the water, but you can walk on the Word. And he's walking by faith and, and, and he's, he, he, we don't know how many steps he took. He might have took 30 steps. Might have took three. We don't know. But we know that uh, apparently there were enough steps that the Holy Ghost said he walked. It didn't say he stepped on the water and began to sink. No, it says he walked. Now, how far that was, we don't know. But I tell you what, if, uh, if I got three steps, I, I'd be shouting. If anybody on this planet got three steps, they'd have a gold medal. <laughs> it says here, and when he saw, remember what I said about your eyes and your ears in the last program. Your eyes and your ears are the main gates that, 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 that God uses to get faith in, and that the devil uses to get fear in. See? And when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. Now, this is this is this is this is a powerful truth. It and it says, it doesn't say, and he sunk. It says, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Now, folks, uh, when I was younger, I did a lot of swimming. I, I, I swam in, in the creek, in the pond, 
in the river, and every now and then, swim pool. And there wasn't no beginning to sink to it. You matter of fact, when 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 you're getting ready to go underwater, if you on the side, if you side if you're on the side of the pool and you jumping in, you didn't jump, you didn't uh jump and and say, well, I'll think I'll breathe when I want to breathe. No, you you jump in. <gasps> Why? Because you had about that much time before you sunk underwater. Here it says, he beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Now, he didn't say, Lord, save me, 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 me. No, it was a slow progression that he recognized where before he was on top of the water, now he's ankle deep, now he's knee deep, now he's waist deep. Why? Fear. Fear. See, how many times do you and I start out in faith and the enemy comes, or maybe not even the enemy, but just natural circumstances that are fear-based we're confronted with, and over a period of time, we begin to sink. See, we begin to sink, and we start to forget what got us started in the first place? What got it? What got Peter started? Jesus didn't come walking along there and said, "Be not afraid, come." He didn't do that. He said, "Be not afraid." And Peter's one said, "Lord, if it be you, let me do what you're doing." How many of you want to do what Jesus is doing? Lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. I was just in a meeting. A boy born with a hole in his eardrum and uh, scheduled for surgery and put my finger in his ear and commanded in the name of Jesus a creative miracle. And we just got the testimony that uh, the mother, after taking the child out of the service, the child was in the car and uh, she asked the child w w how he felt and said, Mommy, uh, God healed my ear. And she said, what do you mean? He said, when that man prayed for me, uh, I felt this noise and rushing in my ear, and it's normal. And she said, what do you mean normal? You can't hear like before? She said, he said, no, mama, I hear everything. God healed my ear. See, I like miracles. That's my Jesus. Well, Peter wanted to do what Jesus was doing. How many of you know Peter ended up doing what Jesus was doing? But there's a powerful truth here. I'm not looking to walk on water. But I'm looking to whatever he says unto me, I'm going to do it and keep my faith level at a, a high enough level and even beyond to get me all the way to the one that said come. See? And he, he started looking around. Well, I don't know where the finances are coming from. Well, I don't know how I'm ever going to do this. You know, it's been six months already. I don't know how my car would ever make that trip. I don't, I don't, I, yeah, you don't know. God does. Faith knows. Faith, faith, faith believes crazy, crazy faith. See, I'm not, I'm not telling you to go out and do stupid stuff. I'm just saying faith is crazy because it comes against normal fear. And here he saw the wind boisterous. Guess what? The wind was boisterous before he got out of the boat. Tells us it was. Tells us it, he was already he already in a boisterous storm. Well, why did he get out of the boat? He got a word from God. And where the word of a king is, there is power. Faith came with one word. One word from the word, come. Four-letter word, come. There was enough faith 
in that one word from the word Jesus to walk on water. But yet, all of a sudden, see, have you ever launched out in faith before? Stepped out in faith before? And then all of a sudden, you know, you, you start realizing, oh boy, uh, uh, maybe, maybe I jumped too soon. Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, no, the, all that stuff was there before anyhow. You just were seen by faith. See, you come into a church service, you hear your pastor teaching on faith, hopefully, and you get so fired up by faith and you, you come out of that Sunday morning service, where is, where is my promised land? Hallelujah, I'm the healed. And by Wednesday, he got to pump you up again. Why? Because you didn't take Monday, Tuesday to keep your faith level up. You should have listened to that message over and over again. You should have you should have uh, meditated those scriptures because the, the natural fear stuff is still there. See? And you, 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 come, you come to church, you come to uh, the Now Network program to learn how to be victorious in faith. That's why the, the name of our, our show is Power of Faith. Power of Faith. Why? It'll overcome fear. See, and so it was already boisterous. Peter already, he's a, he's a skilled fisherman. He, he's a skilled uh, somebody on, on, on the seas with, you know, being a, owning a ship himself. He knows all about that right there, see? But he ain't never walked on water. Every time he got out of the boat, he sunk. But yet, he saw Jesus doing something supernatural. See, when you, when, you, when, you, when you see the Word, Jesus is the Word. When you see this Word, you'll see something that is supernatural for your life. Peter saw something, he saw the Word doing something supernatural. He said, I won't do that. Well, come, faith. To get out of boat. Gets out of that boat. Eleven of them in there. At least. Ain't moving. Judas probably told Peter to give, give him his wallet. I'll hold your wallet for you, Peter. Because Peter ain't coming back. He's crazy. Getting out of that boat. But I'll tell you what. I'd rather get out of the boat. And go a little bit. And even if I start to sink, Jesus is right there. Now, I ain't prophesying that I'm going to sink. But bless God, there's a lesson learned. Look what happens. And immediately, verse 31, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O ye little faith, why, wherefore did you doubt? Now, now you, know, you see how Jesus addressed Peter's fear? Why'd you doubt? Why, Peter, did you doubt? So there's a direct link between fear and doubt. So there's Peter walking on the water. And he starts looking around, and as he starts looking around, he starts doubting his ability with his faith to do what he's doing. And when he starts doubting his ability to do what he's doing in his faith, fear starts creeping in. And as fear starts creeping in, he begins to sink. Well, oh, that's good right there. And Jesus addresses it. He, did, he says, oh, ye of little faith. He ain't talking about a little amount of faith. It takes a whole lot of faith to walk on water. I don't know anybody done it. That, you, you study that out. It's talking about time span. In other words, he's saying, oh, you of a little time span of faith. He wasn't saying that his faith was little. 
He's saying how he used his faith. You only use your faith for a little bit of time. You should have kept your faith going the full time instead of just a little bit of the time. Why'd you let doubt in? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. You see that? Verse, verse 32. It didn't say Jesus carried him. What are you saying, Pastor Philip? I, what I'm saying is you can't prove this is not, and I can't prove it is. All, I, all it says is when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. All we see is Jesus stretching forth his hand and caught him. As soon as he caught him, Jesus' faith causes Peter to rise back up. And then Jesus said, well, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you used your faith only for a short time. Now, why'd you doubt? And Peter gets back on that come word. And, and Jesus, it's not documented, but I believe he said, now, come on, we're going to walk on back to this boat. This is how it's done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He always causes us to triumph. That old, that old spirit of fear, especially with finances. I mean, you know, it was for me and my wife, Alberta. I tell you, uh, lack, lack. Spirit of fear and lack go hand in hand. I mean, what you going to do about this? You got your, got your uh, child's birthday coming up. Well, well you, got, you, you need gas in a car, and they're expecting a bicycle, and you know, all this worry and cons just all this stuff just tries to oppress you. It's fear. It's fear. He said, well, yeah, but, you know, uh, uh, I want my child to have that bicycle. Well, sure you do. Learn to use your faith. Rebuke that fear. See, one of the greatest lessons you can teach your children is how not to be dominated by fear. But the world out there, they don't, they, everything, I mean, uh, you know, if you just watch the advertisements on television, are you kidding? When I was growing up, advertisements on television with Bear, Bear Aspirin and Pepto-Bismol and Vicks Vapor Rub. Now, my goodness, the stuff they got out there and people are just, you know, uh, uh, they're, they're so fearful of catching something. They're so fearful of being uh, overtaken by something. They're, they're just uh, afraid of what may happen to their physical body. I mean, you know, you know, I don't go out eating dirty food, but I've been in some places around the world where, bless God, if I didn't know faith, you know, they served it to me. I'm looking at that and I'm saying, in the name of Jesus you're blessed in Jesus' name. By faith, I bless you in Jesus' name. You'll, you, my body will, will digest this perfectly in Jesus' mighty name. I'm, re, I'm not. This is not a religious prayer. I'm releasing my faith. Why? Because what was just put before me is going into this body, and by faith, it will not harm me. See, see. There's, you know, uh, you and I, as 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 believers, we gotta we gotta get we gotta get better at this. We got to. Uh, have you ever seen Have you ever seen somebody uh, in a panic? Now we got these panic attacks. My goodness, anxiety attack. Well, you know, I just get these panic attacks. You know what that is? Fear in an uncontrolled mind. Well, they just come on me. Fear in an uncontrolled, undisciplined mind. We've not been given the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and sound mind. That's what a panic attack is. It's just fear overwhelming somebody that does not have a mind that's disciplined by the Word of God. I'll never have a panic attack. Never. Ever. See? Now, as we close here, over in 1 John, in chapter 4, we find this. 
in verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he, Jesus is, so are we in this world. So is Jesus at the right hand of the Father in fear, afraid? No. Ain't no fear in him. Why? Verse 18. There is no fear in love. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Well, do you believe that? Look what it says. There is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear. You hear your, you hear your child in, in, in their bedroom and, they're, and, and, and they, they, they're, they, it's the middle of the night and they're screaming out loud. You know, it's thundering out, lightning out. You run in there and, and, and they say, Mommy or Daddy, I'm scared. And you grab them and, and you just hold them and, say, and there's nothing to be afraid of. Daddy's right here. Mama's right here. They just calm down. Why? Because they know you love them. Cast out fear. You speak comfortable words to them. Say, that, that, that can't hurt you. Mama and Daddy's right in the next room. That can't hurt you. Love cast out fear. Well, that'll happen with a parent with their child. How much more the Heavenly Father when you know that God loves you? See, Galatians 5, 6 says that faith worketh by love. And that's, and, and yeah, certainly you have, to, you have to walk out your love walk, but knowing that God loves you, your faith, your faith, your faith is unstoppable. There is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Well, how do you get perfect in love? By faith. By faith, my Father loves me. By faith, His Word says He loves me and gave Himself for me. I just believe Your Word that You love me. You can't stop thinking about it. You love me. See? faith faith don't let fear dominate your life anymore our time's gotten away from us it's been good it's been good being with you Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4 says where the word of a king is there is power be a blessing